With a one-hour finale that aired Sunday, the third season of Demon Slayer wrapped up pretty nicely. This season covered the ninth arc of the series, highlighting the swordsmith village in the mist and love Hashira. As usual, UFO Table has done a great job with adapting the series with its amazing visuals. A lot of people are holding it in high regard, but there is one review I want to talk about today, and that is Moist Critical's Moist Meter. I assume you've watched the original before clicking on this one, but if you haven't, he gave season 3 an 80% which is pretty high. I know the title of the video may seem like I disagree with his assessment, but I actually agree with him on most of what he says. So what's this video about? Charlie started off the video with high praise of the CGI and animation quality, to which I wholeheartedly agree. For me, UFO Table is the golden standard when it comes to CGI and anime, and they have some of the best animated shows out there. The next point he makes is what I want to clarify and expand upon. Charlie's main criticism of the season came from the villains and the overall power levels of the cast. Some of these things I agree with, but not entirely. And I don't blame people for missing some context in the show, because the show only mentions some of these things in passing and quickly moves back to the action part of the fight. I'll tackle it in the order he talks about the Upper Moon fights, starting with Upper Moon 5 vs Muichiro. The fact that Muichiro basically sped run Upper 5 speaks to how strong he actually is. And you'll get to see exactly how strong he is later in the series, but we're not here to talk about things that haven't happened. Muichiro is definitely in the upper half of the Hashidas in terms of overall strength. We know that he's a prodigy, being the youngest person to become a Hashida, and he's a descendant of the first breath user. They mentioned it in his backstory in the anime, but there's actually a little more to it, which I won't be talking about because spoilers. It took Muichiro two months after picking up a sword before he became a Hashida so we know he's super talented. I mean, he's basically the same age as our main characters. On top of that, after Muichiro regained his memories, he also awakened his Demon Slayer mark. And this is where I feel like the anime didn't do a proper job explaining. You've seen it on Tanjiro before, and it's when the scar on his forehead gets bigger. The best way to describe it is it's kind of like the Curse in Naruto. You become stronger and get into an enhanced state at the cost of the physical toll that it exerts on you. Without proper training, they can't maintain it for long, something Zohakten acknowledges later in the show when the Love Hashira awakens her Demon Slayer mark. So yeah, the Demon Slayer mark on top of Muichiro already being strong made Upper 5 look like a low rank demon. I know he seems weak, but it's just that the Miss Hashira is OP. Charlie says that his summon couldn't even do anything to a child, and that he couldn't even kill a swordsmith, which I'm pretty sure he didn't want us to take it seriously. But for those who did, the fish were never meant to be his strongest technique. They're kind of like Frieza's goons from Dragon Ball, and their main purpose were just to terrorize people and act as fodder. As for Haganezuka, Upper 5 was just messing with him. His pride was hurt when he saw that someone else was more driven to their craft than he was. If Upper 5 really tried, Haganezuka would have been minced meat at world record pace. And he definitely could have killed Muichiro while he was poisoned and trapped in the water bubble. But he didn't, because his pride and his jealousy was his downfall. Okay, this is the other thing Charlie had an issue with that I feel like I needed to clear up. The problem he had was how low stakes the upper 4 fight felt compared to the upper 6's fight. I think it's a little disingenuous when he says Tanjiro and the others take it by the chin when they're clearly not having a good time. But he's right that not everyone is on the verge of death this time, and here's why. After what happened in the Entertainment District, Tanjiro, Zenitsu, and Inosuke have been training hard after realizing how incredibly strong the Upper Moons are. At the beginning of the season, they showed us a little training montage before Tanjiro left for the Swordsmith Village. And when he got there, he didn't stop training. This time, he was training against a watered-down version of Ryoriichi. The power-up he gets is like if he trained in the hyperbolic time chamber. The Tanjiro we saw in the Upper Six fight pales in comparison to Tanjiro now. In the last arc, Tanjiro can only do a couple moves from the sun breathing techniques before tapping out, but now he can do full combos and makes it his primary breathing technique. I actually can't remember him using water breathing this season at all. And can we also acknowledge how every time Tanjiro's like, oh no I can't move anymore, my lungs have collapsed, and then proceeds to go plus ultra and do another 3 attacks? Alright, on to Nezuko. Nezuko, I feel like I don't need too much explaining. She's always been incredibly strong in her demon form, having directly received blood from Muzan. 
She was already beating the crap out of Daki before Tanjiro had to step in and calm her down. With her blood demon technique, Yutaro's poison wouldn't have much effect on her. So even in that battle, she was at least on par with upper 6 in terms of strength. So her being able to hold back Hantengu's clones isn't that crazy. As for Genya, his strength is proportional to the demon he consumes. So eating one of the clones of the upper 4 probably gave him a substantial boost, making him more powerful than he's ever been. He was able to keep up quite well while he was in his demon form. He basically had the strength of a watered down Hantengu. Now for the final character, the love Hashida is one of the stronger Hashidas, literally speaking. She's pure muscle, baby. I think it's a general consensus that Tengen is one of the weaker Hashidas alongside Shinobu. He admits it himself that he's not as talented as some of his fellow co-workers. And don't forget, the love Hashida also awakens her Demon Slayer mark, which didn't happen to Tengen. So the comparison here between the upper 4 and the upper 6 fight doesn't really add up. The characters in this arc are much more powerful than the characters from the previous arc, and honestly, I think that's fine. Everyone was holding their own, which I think speaks to the growth of these characters, and that's a good thing. If every battle results in Hashida retiring or someone dying, I don't think it's a good look for the final boss fight. I will give Tengen some credit for doing a great job against Upper 6 while being poisoned and having to take care of three children. Overall, I do think Season 3 is one of the weaker arcs even when I first read it. The Swordsmith Village arc is definitely a step down coming from the Entertainment District arc, but it doesn't mean it's not good. I treat this arc and the next arc more like filler arcs and world building. And like Charlie said, the villains were mainly there for other characters' growth, and there's not much to say about the bad guys. I mean, yeah, there wasn't much to care about when it came to the villains, they were kinda just there. We didn't even learn about the Upper 5th's backstory. That being said, the season did expand on characters we've seen but don't know much about, and new mechanics like other people besides Tanjiro awakening the Demon Slayer mark. We also got to learn how Muzan became a demon, and why he's hyper fixated on Nezuko. All in all, I think Charlie's assessment of 80% is fair and well deserved. I just wanted to expand on the issues he had and bring some light to the things that weren't inherently obvious to everyone. My rating of the season is somewhere between 80 to 85%, because while the story is a bit lacking, the production and visuals make up for it. I don't normally do videos like this where it's a bit more casual, so I hope I got my point across. Since Charlie has a large audience, I want to make sure people don't take everything he says at face value and provide a little more nuance, and make sure they're informed on a topic that I'm passionate about. If you found any discrepancies or just disagree with my video, let me know in the comments down below. And if you learned something, well, the like button is down there too. Until next time, Wong Diggity out.